Alright guys, today we are working on probably the most popular classical piece in the piano repertory, and that is Beethoven's Fur Elise. I'm Sean Cheek. Welcome to my SeanCheek.com videos. I always put the free part one on YouTube and the rest of the lessons for this piece will be on my website SeanCheek.com. And let me mention if you have any trouble reading notes at all, sight reading notes, knowing where the notes are on the keyboard and what they're called, you need to do my sight reading boot camp series which is also on SeanCheek.com. It's kind of a fundamental jump start to get you reading music better and faster. But let's jump in here and get my uh, highlighter turned on. <clears throat> and we start, we, we look up here and we see 3-8 time. And what that means is there's three counts in a measure. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. We're not counting to four. Most of the time in most pieces of music it's a four for the top number, but it's a three here. The bottom number is an eight, and so that tells us the eighth note which looks something like this with a flag, okay, is going to get the beat, okay? So an eighth note gets the beat, and uh, let's see, I've got to clear that. Oh, here's my keyboard. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so quarter notes are going to get two counts. Eighth notes are going to get one count. Sixteenth notes are going to get half a count, okay? So we start on count three, it's a pickup note, so it's count three, and then we have and, okay, and then we're just going to count one and two and three and, okay, three and one and two and three and one and two, and you can just keep counting the sixteenth notes like that throughout the whole piece, one and two and three and, okay, so those are the counts, these are sixteenth notes, they get half a count a piece, so it takes two of them to make one count, that's why we say one and two and three. Alright, we start off with an E in the right hand, this note right here, in the treble clef. Okay, so we start off with the right hand. It says finger five, but I, I like to use finger four. It's how I've always used it since I was a kid. But uh, So fingerings, again, are just, you know, subjective. You can use what works for you. E, then we have a D sharp after that, and I'm going to play with my third finger. And then we go back to E. Then we go back to D sharp, then we go back to E. Okay, so our first notes are E, D sharp, E, D sharp, E. Then we're going to go down to a B. I'm going to use my second finger, but this note on the middle line is a B note. And then up to D natural. Now, okay, these, this D was sharp, and the rule in music is this D would have been sharp too, because once you have a sharp on a note, it makes it sharp for the whole measure. But since they natural it here, it's not a sharp, okay? So play a natural D, a regular D, and then we go to C natural. So let's do what we have thus far. E, D sharp, E, D sharp, E, B, D, C, all right? Play it expressively. <clears throat> now we get to the next measure. Let's continue with the right hand. Here we have an A note, okay? Just play that with your one finger, your thumb. Okay, the next three notes in the right hand, starting right here, are C, little C, and then an E, and then an A. And you want to look at those kind of as a chord pattern here. C, E, A. See how I already get my fingers lined up to play those notes? I get them on the keys. Bah, bah, bah. Okay, now let's look at the left hand. People always have trouble reading bass clef. My sight reading boot camp series is great for making sure that you know your left hand well. <clears throat> but let's look at the first one here. It's an A note down here. It's in the bottom space of the bass clef. Here's the middle C, here's the next C. So this is the A you want with your fifth finger, your pinky finger. And then we're going to go up to an E note in this space. Okay, and I'm going to play that with my pointer finger, my two finger. And then I'm going to go up to an A note, the higher A octave. So this is an A with the thumb. So I have A, E, A. Okay? Now, if you notice, you're going to play your hands together right there. 
and then it just goes left, left, right, right, right. So we play together on the first one, and then left, left, right, right, right. Now I'm holding the pedal down, the damper pedal. If you have a keyboard like I have, you can uh, plug in a foot switch, press it down and hold the notes so they keep ringing. If you have a regular piano, you can press the damper pedal on the right side. So it's the pedal on the right, and it will hold, sustain for you. Hold those notes down. Okay, so let's do what we have thus far. Move on to a uh, B note in the right hand, so we have a B right there. Okay, so that's a B, and that's kind of a continuation of this C E A B. It's just the next note. Um, let's take a look at this right here. Another chord pattern. We start off with an E, and then a G sharp. Okay, so here's a G, and this is a G sharp. I'm going to play it with my two finger. And then uh, the B, after following it, is the next note. That makes an E major chord, those of you who know chords. E, G, sharp, B. Okay? All right, let's look at the left hand for these three. We start off with a low E note. So this first note we have way down here, E. And then we go up an E octave. And we play that with fifth finger and then your one finger right there. E, E. Now, to get this G sharp, I'm simply going to cross over with my two finger like that. See how you cross over from one to the next? E, G sharp, I cross over. Bum, bum, bum. Now, let's put hands together. Of course, we've got to play together there. So, together, left, left, right, right, right. Again, together, left, left, right, right, right. Now, let's go from the beginning, okay? So, we'll start here and go all the way to there. measure. We have a C note here in the right hand. Left hand at this point is going to have the same thing that you had right here. A E A. A E A. Okay? All right, so you play the C in the right hand with the A in the left hand. And then the right hand will have three notes to go after that. These three right here, which are E and then up to high E and then a D sharp. And it's just like what we did here, okay? The, that E and D sharp, the last note in that measure, the last two notes, are like starting right here. We're going to repeat some things, okay? So starting right here, continuing on to that point right there, it's exactly the same, okay? So the part that I marked in red is exactly the same as what we've already taught. this addition, they have a D note here. I've always played it as an E. So if you were my personal student, I would put an X on that note, put an E. An addition just means, you know, there are different copies. Way back then they just hand copied everything and sometimes there would be a note difference, a discrepancy. Uh, and I think we've all heard it as an E, so I would change this D note to an E. Okay? And then C, B, A. So, E, C, B, play that A, you're going to play left hand A, E, A, so, all right, then it would repeat, so we take a look here, I'm going to put this back again, so you remember to do that as an E, when you repeat, you have E, D sharp, then you have the two bar lines, the thick line and the skinny line, and the two dots, and it tells you to repeat back to the beginning, or not to the beginning, but to this repeat sign that's facing the other way. So you'd go back to this point. So you'd go bum, bum, and then come back here, and then continue. All right, so that's, that's all we're going to do in this uh, free part one. But let me go slowly for you from the beginning all the way to, I'll stop right here, okay? Here we go. One, two, three, and one.
that's it for the, the free part one. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you on SeanCheek.com.